My name is Josh. I'm a software engineer at Oracle, and today I'm going to be talking about how to store and analyze JSON using the Oracle Autonomous JSON database. So I have just three slides here, and then I'm going to jump right into doing a demo. So the Autonomous database is the managed version of Oracle database, meaning you don't have to install it, configure it, do backups, or things like that. All that's done for you. Uh, you just create one and it's ready to go. And the autonomous JSON database is the version of the autonomous database that is intended for building interactive uh, applications and microservices that mainly need to store JSON data. You can connect to HAD using either Mongo collection APIs or uh, normal SQL drivers. There's an always free version of it. Uh, it has all the same features as ATP, uh, meaning anything you can do in HAD, you can also do in ATP, the transaction processing version. Uh, the only difference is, is that in HAD, you're limited to 20 gigabytes of non-JSON storage, meaning you can only scale up the JSON data in HAD. But because of this limitation, we offer it at a much lower price. So the idea with uh, AJD is that it's intended to compete with NoSQL document stores. It has all of the same benefits that you would expect from a NoSQL database. Uh, first, it's elastic, meaning you can scale the compute and storage capacity of your database as uh, the demands of your application increase. It provides very low latency access to your database uh, at scale. So even when a lot of people are using the database, it can still keep the response time for small reads and writes under 10 milliseconds. It's highly available, and it's priced to be uh, very competitive with these other databases. But with HAD, it is running Oracle Database, and it has a lot of benefits that you won't uh, see in these other databases. And the main one that we're going to demonstrate today is the ability to uh, evaluate SQL uh, directly over JSON data stored in collections. So JSON collections can be thought of as an abstraction uh, of a or, or a view of a table with a single JSON column. Our, our basic story here is the following. If you're, if you're building a microservice or an application where you just want to persist your data, you just want to save your application object, then SQL may not actually add much value here. And it actually may make the application code a bit more uh, verbose than it needs to be. And it can even be a barrier to entry for some developers. Uh, so a collection uh, allows you to very simply uh, put get, update, and filter these JSON objects. But when you create one of these collections, underneath the table, it's actually creating a, a table with a single JSON column. Uh, and so this allows it so that if you want to, you can write a SQL query that queries that same JSON data that you put in the collection. And we've added a lot of features to SQL at a very low level in the database kernel uh, that make it very easy and efficient to query uh, JSON values from SQL. So for today's demo, I'm going to be working with data from a company that uh, has bike sharing stations around the world. These stations let people run a bike for short periods of time so that they can get around in uh, urban areas. Oracle isn't affiliated with this company. I'm just using their data uh, because they've done a really nice job of exposing public data uh, about these stations. So specifically, they have two data sets that we're going to load uh, today. Uh, the first data set on the left uh, has a JSON object for each of the stations. Uh, there's about 1,600 stations, so there's about 1,600 of these objects. Uh, they contain information like the name, the location, and the capacity of the bike station. The second data set on the right uh, contains JSON objects that represent the state of a station at a given point in time. Uh, so these objects have information uh, like the uh, number of bikes available at that point in time. So each station may have multiple objects in this status data set. And the two data sets join together on an attribute uh, called station ID. Uh, so it's a one-to-many relationship between these two collections. And so we're going to take this bike data, we're going to load it into the database using Mongo import. We're going to connect to the database using uh, Mongo's command line tool, Mongo SH. Uh, then we're going to build a small REST service uh, using Spring Boot. And then finally, we're going to show how you can analyze and visualize this JSON uh, data uh, using SQL JSON. And so I'm going to move fairly quickly through this demo, and I'm going to kind of show the main points. I'm not going to show all the details, but this link I have here on the bottom of this slide has all the gory details of what I'm about to do. Um, it's, uh, 
you can uh, go here and it'll give you step-by-step -step, uh, instructions uh, on how to repeat uh, in your own cloud account what you're about to see me do. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, I've got a database and I've got a compute node uh, created for this demo. Uh, it's pretty easy to compute them, uh, create them. Um, my, my steps cover how to do it. So I'm clicking on Oracle database and autonomous JSON database. And here's my database. I'm going to open it up. And the first thing I'm going to do is open the service console of this database. And so once it's open, I'm going to click on development. And if I scroll down, there's this card at the bottom titled Oracle Database API for MongoDB. And this has the MongoDB connection string I can use if I want to connect to this database using MongoDB clients or tools. So I'm going to take this uh, connection string, and I'm going to go to a terminal on my compute node. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set this connection string to a variable called URI. And so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use this Mongo uh, import command to load the bike station data into this database. So I'm using curl to grab the bike station objects directly from their web service. I'm using this, this command line tool, JQ, to pull out the station objects of the result and change the station ID attribute to underscore ID. Underscore ID is the special name of the ID attribute uh, that Mongo clients expect. And then finally, I'm passing the result of all this to Mongo import um, to connect to my database and, and load that data. OK, so I've loaded 1,600 uh, uh, bike stations. And so now I'm going to do the same thing for those status records. OK, so we've got 20,000 status records. And so now I'm going to connect to this uh, database using the Mongo command line tool. If I say show collections, oops, plural, it shows me that I have two collections, station and status. And so I can look at the data in these collections. And so you see these bike station objects that are uh, similar to the one you saw on the uh, PowerPoint slide. And I can do most of the same things you'd expect to be able to do in MongoDB. For example, if I want to. Um, if I want to bring back a particular bike station, I can uh, uh, pass a filter document here uh, to only bring back the station where ID is equal to 497. So we get back that station. And it, notice here it has a capacity of 66. So if I wanted to change this capacity to 77, I can, can do that kind of thing too. So I can run the, the update function and set capacity for this station to 77. So if I bring it back again. Um, see now that I've got a, a document with uh, that's changed from 66 to 77. So um, the next thing I'm going to do is show how we can uh, spin up a microservice, uh, a REST service over these uh, collections. Um, so I'm going to start a simple REST service using Java and Spring Boot. So I picked Java and Spring Boot because it seems to be pretty popular. However, if you want a Java developer, or if you are and you don't like Spring Boot, uh, don't worry about it. I'm not really going to focus on the details of Java or Spring Boot too much. The main point I'm trying to show here is that uh, this database is well suited for this type of uh, use case. Uh, you can likely use you know, your, your language or your framework of choice equally well here. Um, so I'm going to bring up the source code for this, this little service. Uh, so Spring Boot is what they call uh, an opinionated framework. It assumes a lot of uh, conventions and uh, default configurations and, and makes it so that you can write a, a surprisingly little amount of code and it creates these REST services for you pretty much automatically. So the main code I had to write is these model classes. I created these plain old Java objects, station and status, that if you've seen Java before, it's, it's just a, about as bland of a Java class as you can get. It's just a class for station, and it has all these 
uh, members that map that has share the same name as the JSON attributes in, in my doc in my in my JSON objects. And so I did that for station and status. And then I created these repository instances that kind of hook those classes into uh, the Spring Boot framework and also MongoDB's Spring Data Adapter. So if I look at like the station uh, repository, I, I basically just extended the Mongo uh, repository and then I've annotated it saying I want this thing to be exposed as, as REST endpoints. So I'm going to go back here to my terminal and I'm going to build this service. So building the service produces this jar bytes.jar. And now I'm going to uh, start that up. So I'm calling java-jar with that jar specified. And the other thing I'm sending in is the connection string to my database. Uh, and this is processed by MongoDB's Spring Data Adapter. OK, so my service is started. So now I'm going to this program called Postman. Postman is just a tool that lets me um, test my REST services. I can submit REST requests from it. So the, the first request I'm going to do is I'm going to send a GET uh, request to station 497. So if I run this, hopefully we should see the service is working. And it is. It sends me back that station. I can also uh, have endpoints for status. Uh, so here I'm going to pull back all the status records for the same station. And so I get back a bunch of these status records as well. And so I'll come back and I'm going to use this uh, uh, REST service uh, one more time towards the end of the demo. Um, but before we leave uh, to go on to do some uh, things with SQL, I wanted to uh, show this tool called uh, JMeter. So what this JMeter tool does is it allows you to performance test your services, including REST services. So I've created a little JMeter test here. And so it's basically going to do a get uh, on a station, and then it's going to put insert a status record. And so it's going to do this get and this insert over and over. Very simple test. And so if I click go, it's spinning up a few threads, and it's, it's running those commands over and over again and clear the previous results. And so if I go look at the results here, uh, it's basically giving me, uh, down below, you can see uh, it's still kind of running here it's at about 2,000 requests. But it's giving me my average response time is uh, 6 uh, milliseconds. And if I scroll through these, once in a while, one pops above 10 seconds, but mostly they're, they're well under 10 milliseconds per request. And, and, it, and it gets better as it, as it kind of warms up. Um, so this is you know, admittedly, uh, a fairly superficial performance test. We've also run more heavier um, benchmarks like YCSB that really stress out the system. And uh, and you can, as long as you provision enough uh, compute and database capacity, you can keep these um, these latencies low, uh, even when you have a lot of uh, people using your database at once. So at this point. I've created a REST service. I've, I've loaded this data. And I've not written a single line of SQL. Um, and so and that's possible. And we could end it here. But really, the cool thing about AJD is now all this, this, this bike station data, I can go and I can still access it using SQL. And uh, that's what I'm going to show next. So I'm going back to my database console here. And I'm opening up database actions. So database actions has a lot of ways to interact with your database uh, from a web browser. And we're going to be looking at uh, one way in particular. They have a way that you can execute SQL. Before I jump in there, there's also a JSON um, uh, tool that I just want to mention called JSON Workshop. And so if we come in here, we can see these collections in kind of like a NoSQL type way. Like I can uh, look at my documents. I can do those filters here. And I can edit the documents um, from a web browser. But what I want to show right now is this SQL window. So here, it's what it's showing me is that I have two tables uh, that map, match the, the names of these collections. 
they have exactly the same columns. Um, there's some housekeeping columns like when the document was created and so on. But the main column is data. This is a column in this table that's storing uh, the data for these collections. So if I run this query, um, we can see here those same documents that we just inserted. I'm calling JSON serialize here because it's stored in a, an efficient binary JSON format uh, that we came up with. Um, so calling JSON serialize, it just converts it back to text so that we can see what it looks like. Um, but we can do more than just bring back the documents from a SQL query. Um, we can also uh, project out the fields in these JSON objects as columns in a, the result of a query. So here I am um, I'm pulling back the attributes from within these JSON objects as um, columns in the result of this query. So here we see the idea of the station, the name, uh, and so on. And at this point, really, uh, you can do, if you're familiar with SQL, you can do anything that you're used to. You can do joins, aggregations, group buys. You can join cross collections. You can join, you know, a JSON collection with a relational table. Like, there's no restrictions on, on what you can do at this point. Um, so dotting through into the names like this is great if you know uh, the fields that you want to query. Uh, but um, we also have this feature called Data Guide that can kind of do this for you automatically, so you don't even have to um, uh, specify all, uh, all the attributes in the select list. So the next one I'm going to do is Data Guide. And so this is going to create some relational views um, directly over these JSON columns. So basically, I'm calling create view. I'm telling it the view name I want, telling it the name of my table. I'm telling it the column I want it to go, go uh, introspect for me. So if I select views now over here, I see I've got these two relational views where it's automatically looked at all the JSON data and pulled it out into relational columns. So this is a view. It, it didn't materialize any data here, but it's just kind of making it so I can query it relationally, uh, even though it's really you know JSON underneath this view. So, uh, so I'll just select from station quickly. So here you can see, got all the data from our station objects as relational columns. And so now let's do uh, something a bit more interesting. So the query I have here is doing a join between these two views, between stations and status. And what it's doing is it's pulling out the name of the station, its station ID, and it's joining with status, and it's computing the minimum bikes available, the maximum bikes available, and the average bikes available across all of the um, status, the 20,000 status records. So the result of this query is we'll get one row showing the station and uh, the uh, minimum and uh, maximum bikes that were available during this period. So here you can see the result of that. So we've got the name of the station, the minimum, and the maximum. Uh, but I'm going to take this data now, and I'm going to show how, in this same browser tool, we can turn this into a visualization. Um, so uh, just so I don't have to um, type this query over and over, I'm going to turn it into a view, so I can reference the view name instead of this, this join definition here. Um, so So I'm creating a view called Station Availability. So that view is created. And so now if I select from that view, so here I'm selecting from the station availability view. And I'm, I'm, I'm sh there's a lot of rows there. So I'm just I'm adding a, a only where the minimum was greater than 20 and the average was always greater than 50. So bikes that had a lot of, you could think of this as stations that have a lot of idle bikes during this period. And so we get back six results here. Um, so I'm going to take this now. And I'm going to create a bar graph. So if I click on charts here, I can create a new chart. I'll call it bike, bike availability. And I'm basically just going to paste in that same SQL query to a bar chart. So on the x-axis, we'll put the station name, set that to the name attribute. And on the y-axis, we'll do the maximum bikes available. OK, and so if I click Preview, see so we get a nice looking 
our graph there. So I'm going to create this and open it. And so this is a live uh, bar graph of this JSON data. And just to show you that it's live, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go back to this Postman tool. And I'm going to insert uh, for station uh, 303. So here, let me show you. So there's, if I go click on this button here, I can see that this, this first station, Mercer and Spring, is station ID 303. So if I go back here now, we're going to change the result of this bar graph. So I'm going to Postman, and I'm inserting a record that says 303 had 200 bikes at some point. So, I'm just, so I inserted that row, and if I come back here and refresh this, immediately it changes. So this is a live view of our uh, JSON data. And I can even uh, delete it. I, I added some code so that it can, if I, if I delete a station, it will transactionally, atomically delete not only the station record, but all of its status records at once. So if I click here, uh, so it ran that, and if I refresh that, now they're gone. So this the concludes uh, what I wanted to demo uh, about the uh, facilities in the autonomous JSON database. And so the idea here is that you really get the best of both worlds. You get uh, the fast NoSQL style application development, but at the same time, uh, you don't lose uh, things like SQL transactions, advanced security features, all the things you'd expect from Oracle database. Um, so thank you. Uh, here's a few links. Uh, so the first one uh, is a general link on the autonomous JSON database. Um, here's a, a nice blog by our product manager, uh, Roger Ford, on how to get started using the Oracle API for MongoDB with AJD. And then this uh, link here uh, is the, um, it's the uh, GitHub page with all the steps and the, some of the details I skipped today on how you can repeat uh, what you just saw in your own database. Thank you.